Hi all, I'm Tony, and this is SV Tapatia, and we are building this boat that you see behind me. Um, and it's been now five years and nine months or so of this boat build, and, and uh, as you may well know, we're very, very close to being finished or being to the stage of moving her up to the marina, up to the water side, and getting ready for the, the last little bits for the launch. And uh, if all goes well in a couple of days, that will that will happen, which is very exciting. So this week, I'm going to do something different and uh, going to have a look back and think, you know, with the benefit of, of the experience of the build, think about the tools that have been used on this build and uh, my review of those, I guess. Let's have a look. So we're here in the workshop and uh, what we'll do is we'll start off with the, with the more fixed tools, the bigger machine tools. We'll progress into the handheld machine tools and finish off with hand tools after that and uh, talk about the tools that have, that have been used on this boat build. And uh, you know, the title of this video is, is uh, what tools do you need for to build a boat or something along those lines at least. Um, and of course it depends on the boat you're building clearly. Uh, and so this is a review and a look back over the tools that I've used on this build. And this boat, it has to be said, is, is a plywood structure on wood frames. So we've got dug fir frames, plywood hull, um, layered up, you know, laminated up. And uh, so a lot of it's been wood work. There's been some steel uh, fabrication, stainless fabrication. Um, that's the bulk, you know, the bulk of the the materials involved have been a lot of wood, a bit of steel, a little bit of plastics. That's really what we've done, and of course some epoxy and fiberglass, clearly. So let's think about the tools. I say starting with machine tools, bigger machine tools, and have a little review. And we're going to start with this table saw, um, and for wooden boat building. I would say that a table saw is absolutely essential. Uh, uh, you could probably manage without, but uh, but for me, I wouldn't want to do it without a table saw. And if you've been following the build all the way through, you'll know that this is actually the third of these table saws that I've used on the build. And I'm going to give you a, you know, a bit of a proviso there. The first one was, was old. I'd used it for years before that, and early in the build it died. Um, it wasn't the build that killed it, it was its, you know, its previous use that was the issue. Then I bought the second one. Now, they're very, very cheap, these saws, about 125 euros, I think. So, you know, <laughs> they're not the best of quality, but they do the job and they're fine for me. Now, I should say, you know, clearly if you can afford it, a more expensive saw will be better, I have no doubt. But these little things, they're fine, they do the job. So the next one I bought did the bulk of the build, almost the entire build. And it died January or so this year, just coming towards the end. So basically one saw lasted through the entire build. And in this one I bought, I say in January, and it's barely been used on this boat build. This one's a Sheback, a German named brand. I suspect they're all made in China, but I, I can't be sure of that. There are various brands, they're all basically the same. This one, it has to be said, the quality of them seems to be gradually improving. So if I compare the three that I've had, that are all essentially the same model, different, different brand names, but essentially the same, um, I can see an increase in quality over the three. And this is the latest one, it's the best of the three, certainly, which is good. What I should say about it is, you need to use different blades so I buy blades on Amazon um, tipped blades and you know a decent thickness of blade so it doesn't flex for ripping I've got a specialist ripping blade which is this, this CMT ripping blade um, very good so a, a special blade for ripping and these for general purpose applications so the blades if you change the blade on them you're good to go uh, have enough power to cut depth of nine centimeters maximum depth 
you're cutting anything thicker you've got to cut it from both sides uh, they're very good what isn't particularly good is these these slides guides because they're only fixed at one end and they're a bit wobbly so you've got to bear that in mind when you're cutting uh, watch what you're doing draw a pencil line cut to that whatever these they're a guide but not more they, they, they won't hold it you always get one of these so I've got a collection of those now pushing sticks very important for cross cutting for cross cutting I've got a sledge that fits in the slot you have to take the top guard off if you're going all the way through but other than that not a problem it comes off easily the riving knife is very very important set that right set it accurately so it's just clear of the blade this one on the latest saw it stuck up above the height of the blade and I didn't like that because you couldn't cut anything that was more than nine centimeters deep on it so I cut it off shorter and drilled a new hole to, to fit the dust catcher there but um, other than that, these are great little saws. I say they're really cheap. If you can afford a better one, lovely, do so. But if not, then these, these will do the job, has done the job, have done the job, and they're fine. So you've got the, the depth on this wheel here, blade height, depth of cut, as you see, and blade angle, and you can push that in and wind it to, to adjust the angle if you so wish or adjust it by hand if you don't I'm doing it with one hand because I'm holding the camera but there we go so that's what you got there a little thermal reset on off switch um, so overheating protection on the thermal reset button or thermal fuse which makes them last a bit longer I think and generally a fine little saw then over here also a sheback I do believe we've got this little planer thicknesser and uh, it's also a very useful piece of kit as you can see by the state of it it's been used a fair bit I was very fortunate with this because one of our lovely patrons who, who happens to live nearby allowed me to buy this off him for very very little money so uh, that was a that was a good deal and for a long time I didn't have a thicknesser. It's got a planer on the top, thicknesser through the bottom. I've essentially never used the planer. I think I used it once actually. It's the thicknesser that's the useful bit of kit here. Um, I would have got through the build without one. I don't think this counts as essential, but I say the offer was too good to refuse and I'm very, very pleased I got it. It's also a sheer back. Uh, it's also got a thermal cutout on it, on off switch, height adjustment obviously to, to adjust the thickness in capabilities or, or you know levels um, and very good. I When I got it I put a new set of blades in it, they're readily available, got them on Amazon I think, um, you know you can sharpen them as well but I put a new set in and it cuts really nicely and it has been a valuable addition to the to the workshop certainly. So something that I would most certainly put in the essential category is a bench grinder. Again, as you can probably tell, it doesn't need to be the best quality. It needs to be a bench grinder. This one I got for free actually, it's, it's old. Um, and uh, it does the job. You know, great if you need to cut bolts or whatever, just for tidying up the end thread, a bit of shaping. There's no end of uses, sharpening drills, no end of uses you end up putting a bench grinder to and uh, as I say I would rate one as being absolutely essential so over here we've got the pillar drill um, it was very cheap in fact I bought this very early on when I arrived in Germany I've been in Germany 25 years or so and I bought this you know within the first few years of that it was sold at Aldi, who you, you may or may not know if, if Aldi are in your neck of the woods. It was flat pack, so you had to assemble it yourself. It's certainly not the best pillar drill you'll ever find, but it does the job. And actually I'm quite happy with it. 
is not the most powerful beast in the world. You need to be a little bit careful with it, gentle with it on occasions, but it's fine. The table, which is adjustable up and down, it has got a bit of flex in it, so it does pay to, to pack it out with some wood underneath if it's an important hole that needs to be upright. Came with a little vice. Um, it's quite good. The worst thing about this one is that the chuck key doesn't really fit. It's the chuck key, the chuck key that came with it and, and it's a bit loose and it doesn't tighten up the chuck that well, frankly. Um, it involves some swinging on it, but, um, but I've managed. It's done everything I've asked it to. It's been a really, really useful tool and I think a pillar drill, essential. I will put a pillar drill in the essential list. As you see, it doesn't have to be the best quality. All tools, the better the quality, the better. But you've got a price consideration. What can you afford? And, and you have to work within that. And a pillar drill, certainly essential. Essential is you can drill, or you can, certainly for stainless steel, you get that bit of extra pressure on. Drilling stainless with hand drills is, is tricky. But with a pillar drill, it goes through easily. And it drills naturally upright and square and whatever, unlike a, a handheld drill. So, really useful bit of kit. So, the most expensive fixed tool here, machine tool here, in this workshop is this little mini lathe. Um, probably not essential, but if you want to be able to fabricate parts yourself and the parts you'll need for a boat, very, very useful. And I'm certainly not sad to have bought it. it it's been brilliant. Um, it's enabled me to do things that I certainly would not have been able to do without it. Very, very good indeed. Um, having said that, they are desperately underpowered. You have to learn to work very, very gently with them. Um, the parting tools are, uh, that are available for them are dreadful, unless there are some good ones that I haven't found. Um, I've seen people putting them in reverse and using the parting tool upside down, which I've tried and didn't find much better. Um, but you've seen what I've done with it. You know I've done a lot with it. I've used it a lot. And once you've learned to work gently with the little thing, very, very good. Like other things, as I've said already, if you can afford a proper lathe, it'll be better. No doubt about it. So if you can get your hands on a proper one and you've got room to put it in somewhere, another consideration, it'll be better. But if not, these mini lathes, when I think I paid a bit under 500 for this one. Um, it's worth it. It's been worth it. It's been good. So progressing to slightly less fixed tools, or completely not fixed tools. Most of the world in I do, you know, you've seen it so many times. I use this little... IPO Tools Inverter Welder. I doubt very much the brand is important. Inverter Stick Welder. Um, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, and look at the, you know, it's, it's portable, the weight of the thing. Plug it in the mains, obviously. Um, adjustable ampage, finely adjustable with a digital readout. Marvellous thing. Um, I did. I did upgrade the uh, stick clamp and I should, yes, I should upgrade the earth clamp. I haven't yet, but I will. They're not great, but very good. If you're not familiar with these automatic LCD, uh, automatic darkening masks, they changed the world world of welding you know if, if you're like me old school when you started off with the old handheld things where you sort of look in and duck in behind it these <laughs> these change the world of welding they really do and this like so many things is not an expensive one i bought it at the local diy store and and it's great um it's not that great that I didn't need to repair it, but, but the darkening element of it is a wonderful thing. Thoroughly recommended. And I use that with these, the Hyundai stainless rods um, that are very good, although others are fine. Some regular steel rods for regular steel. And it's all stood on top of a MIG mag welder there. 
um, that I used once, I think, on this broke build. I Well, it's not a very good one, and I don't like it, frankly. But I did use it on one thing. And when you see like, Doug on, on uh, Seeker or whatever, the welding that he does is it, a different level to what I do, and, and his welding equipment is far better than mine. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. Um, mine's basic and has done everything I needed, but no more than that. So I've got all my mains powered, handheld power tools on the bench here. And we try and make some sense of it all. I said all, oh, but actually I've just remembered one that isn't there. Anyhow, let's start. This, oh, my firm. <laughs> yeah, not a quality brand, I'm sure. But it's a big old um, half inch chucked electric drill. It's been used on the build. It's very good. It's very good with the one exception that the two gears, it jumps out of gear when you're using it. So sometimes I have an elastic band around it to stop that thing moving. Sometimes I drill holding it to stop it moving. Other than that, it's fine and essential. Put it away. Handheld circular saw. Essential, skill, cheap, I'm sure you'll know. I burnt this one out on the mast building. Um, but it wasn't new to the boat build. I'd, I'd done a lot of work around the house before that. So I couldn't claim the boat build. Burnt it out. It's a decent diameter. I don't know what diameter it is. I can measure it. It's a depth of cut of about 72 millimeters, I think, some of them. You know, reasonable depth of cut on it. I need to buy a new one and I'm looking at Dewalt at the moment. I'm quite impressed with Dewalt tools, but I'm a bit torn whether to buy a mains power one or go for a Makita battery one. I'm thinking about it. <coughs> of equal quality, actually iron hell, so yeah, maybe equal quality. Saber saw, I would say essential, a saber saw. It, there, are, there are jobs that you just need to get in. The, the fact that you can bend the blade to get in there to cut something flush. You can cut all sorts of, you know, quite deep cuts at angles and things that are tricky to get at. I wouldn't want to be without a saber saw. And of course, a, a set of blades for it, you know, <laughs> clearly. Also, iron hell. Uh, also, on the mast build, I've Burned out my electric planer. I replaced it with this one. It was cheap. It's actually very good. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, it's better than the original. The original one I had before it was a skill. This is a good little planer. And, and a mains powered electric planer, essential, essential. I've also got the battery powered one, as you may know, which I'll talk about in a while. But these just have so much more power to them and uh, very good. <coughs> Bosch router, the big old router, not the little handheld edging tool things. It's, it's a bit of a beast, but you know if you followed, you know that I've used it a fair bit. I find them very, very good for cutting circular holes in plywood, for example, where the masks go through, where the port lights go in. Um, very, very good. And Clearly for edging, you need a range of, of bits for them, obviously. It's good. Yeah, essential. Essential. Uh, nearly essential. You could manage without one. You could. And what I don't like about routers is that they turn wood into dust. And wherever you're using them, you know, your room is just a cloud of dust at the end of things. I'd rather produce shavings or something like that if I possibly could. This is a very, a very beautiful jig I made up for the router for, for producing round holes with the router. As you can tell it's a very simple thing. It screws it screws to the base of the router through these three holes and then um, it pivots you know, around that bolt that you set in the piece of wood you're drilling, the router blade comes through that hole and then 
voila. I have two angle grinders. I originally only had one and I've burnt it out. <laughs> this is a recurring theme. That one I bought actually as an emergency replacement. It was the only shop that was open where I could get a grinder. So I bought this and then later I bought the DeWalt. And what I've done is I use this one for cutting, so it's got a cutting disc on it. And this one for grinding, so it's got a grinding disc on it. And I find that very good actually, because I don't have to keep swapping discs. So, you know, I can cut something and then grind it up. And the DeWalt is undeniably the superior angle grinder. And then that's all the sort of cutting and grinding. Coming to finishing tools. This DeWalt Orbital Sander, which I'm very pleased with. Um, I buy the discs on Amazon. These are Bosch in this case, but they're no better than any other ones I bought. But this Orbital Sander is very good from DeWalt. Very good. On off switch at the end, which sometimes is a little fiddly to switch. Speed controller I never touch. And uh, you might remember years ago I said, 80 grit sandpaper. I never use anything other than 80 grit. Sadly, I have one of these triangular sanders. This is a Bosch, but it doesn't matter. I love them. I love them. But there are on occasions you've got to get into a little corner or an edge or whatever, and I use it, and I never, never enjoy it. Never. This one. Firstly, you only ever sand on the edge of the triangle of paper because if it's big enough to do that, you'd use that. So you just simply wear out the edges. Secondly, on this one, this triangular pad falls off when you're least expecting it due to the fact that the little plastic thing that's supposed to locate it on there or, or make it removable fell off. So. I don't like them, but I've got one and I've used it on this boat build and yeah, useful, I suppose, if it has to be. Finally, belt sanders. I've got two belt sanders and you may know why if you follow. I've got this beast of a Makita, absolute beast. It's an animal and fantastic and for what it is surprisingly cheap um, it is a brilliant piece of kit if, if as belt sanders go you know i'm not a big belt sander fan because they're aggressive and they take too much material off but sometimes you want to and that i'm out of breath holding it the weight of the thing and i've also got this one Jello, which is lighter. You may remember that they sent me this one for do, doing a review. It's the only thing I've ever reviewed. Is that true? I think it is. Um, and I did review it and I've still got it and it still works and I've used it a fair bit. It works fine. The worst thing about this is the cooling of the motor blows straight into your face and consequently any dust that's coming off the belt is also blown straight. You end up having to hold it like that to get your face out of the way to draft out of the motor. Other than that, it's fine. Well, the final power tool you're going to need if you're going to build a boat is one of these things. This is the Singer, is it 4411 Heavy Duty? Um, you know, I'm no sewing expert, that's for sure, but I'm teaching myself to sew with this and it's I'm very very happy with it it's a great machine sews through all sorts of thicknesses of cloth very capable and pleasantly not too scarily expensive and then turning our attention and I'll say this now just to <laughs> ease any worries this video is already getting quite long so it'll be machine tools today and we'll progress to uh, hand tools another time but uh, Battery machine tools, the ones that I've used up, uh, is it, uh, so far throughout, it's been only tools that I've used on the boat build and the ones that I consider useful for that. So, on a couple of occasions, I've used this Makita battery chainsaw. It's, clearly you could do it with other options, but sometimes you want to cut something big and fairly quickly. 
it's very useful and these Makita battery powered 18 volt on their battery power tools it takes two batteries to change all it's it's a fantastic piece of kit it really is um, you know you can go out in the forest and chop a bit of fire with it it's, it's very good and then you may well know that I use several of these Bosch 12 volt tools and they keep them in this stack of they call them L boxes don't they L boxes so in the top one I normally have it's not in there because I've been using it today the little angle grinder and I've got a flappy disc on there but I've also got uh, stainless cutting discs for it and a multi get out multi material cutting disc wood plastics and the likes I think it's excellent I really do think it's excellent very very useful piece of kit I've got two drills and <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that you need two although it's handy because sometimes I have one in the boat and one in the workshop but one of them's the blue the professional range and one's the green and I bought the green one first and used that and then when I bought all the others they were the professional range so I bought the blue drill to go with the kit because the batteries don't fit even though even though they're both 12 volt they, they, that ends exactly the same the shaping here and here is different for the green and the blues who thought of that idea ridiculous so that battery fits the green ones and that battery fits the blues and all the blue professional ones take the same batteries while I'm on that topic I've got three batteries I've got two of the small ones and one of the bigger whatever amp, amp power that is I don't know it doesn't say does it uh, four amp hour. one of those uh, they are starting or at least one of the smaller ones is starting to get tired now um, and I will have to buy some new batteries soon or at least a new battery you can't have enough batteries really well, I suppose you could, but three is necessary, I would say. I would say three. Moving on. I have the little battery powered jigsaw, which is marvelous. It's not the most powerful, it lacks power, but it cuts and you haven't got that cable dangling around and you don't have to supply cable power to it. And uh, it's very good, really. It really is good. I'm happy with it. Plus, I think you know when you go sailing, all these tools can be used on the boat. You know that's a big change to the way things used to be. Um, so that's the top box. Moving on to box two. The only thing I've got in here is the. I call it a Dremel, but obviously, actually, I think Dremel are owned by Bosch, as I understand it. I'm no expert, but um, it's the little Dremel <laughs> battery power. I bought it to cut the top of the keel bolts off because I couldn't find another way of getting in to cut them off below the, the top of the floors, uh, the wood cross beams. So um, I used it for that and it did great. And since then, I've used it a few times. I've got... got a couple of different sets of tools but that's one of the sets of tools you could manage without this it's not essential I'm not even sure that it's great I'm not a massive fan but on occasions I reach for it and it does a job and I think yeah, yeah perhaps that is useful so mixed feelings down to box three and here we have the battery planer that you've seen me using an awful lot it's very good um, it's got a little red slidey thing there with spare planer blades in it so you can change them um, I snagged this one up on a screw and damaged the foot but I've got 
in that paper I've got a new foot I've just never got around to changing it and it's not I just ground it off flush it's okay it doesn't hang up on anything one thing I like is this little removable slide that directs the chippings so you can change which side the chippings fly out so you fly them out away from you and not in your face it's very good and you know usual depth the cut thing it's a great tool and lastly for plywood boat building something like this is essential and this has been great the mini circular saw cuts up a sheet of plywood comfortably i think it's got about an inch depth of cut in that region um, and you can angle it and you know everything that a little circular saw or well, any handheld circular saw can do it's fantastic it's still got the original blade on it now from what i read people like to replace these blades with the makita blades they say they're better but i've, I've got no issues with this blade and that's still the original and i've cut every single piece of plywood that's nearly true the vast vast majority of the plywood used in this boat has been cut with this plus lots of other things it's it's fantastic i i can't recommend that highly enough really good tool and think about you know these battery tools it's the 12 volt as i say that's with the big battery in it here we go that's what it looks like it's still quite small, isn't it? It's not a big, unwieldy thing. It's, it's, it's easy to use at wherever, you know, wherever you might have to reach. I say, I can't recommend that highly enough. The saw, particularly, they're all good. The Dremel, yeah. The others, ace. And there we are that's battery tools and as i say that's i'm going to leave it this video is already long enough i'll do a second tool video on handheld tools there's a lot to talk about there um yeah a lot to talk about still so it'll come up in a few weeks with a bit of luck we should be moving the boat initially tomorrow for the first move in the yard and second move out and up the road and to the marina should be the day after tomorrow so uh, it's all very exciting and i need to get this video done today so that um so that i'm free tomorrow for the moving uh, i've been busy on the boat i'll show you i'll talk about that next time so thank you for watching I'm just going to find a word. I'm going to say that the, the girls, Hazel and Elizabeth, are sailing as I speak to you. And they're on their way, all being well, to the Silly Isles. And Hazel's next video, which will be still Scotland, I do believe, I'm sure, comes out tomorrow. So, Sailing Alanya Wally. There's a link in the video description. Uh, I think they're very good videos. I say thank you for watching. As ever, a massive, massive thank you to the people who support us on Patreon via PayPal. You guys, you make these videos possible. It, it wouldn't happen without you. So, if you'd like to support the channel, support the video production, Patreon is a good way to do it, or there's a link to the PayPal me in the video description. If you've got any questions about any of the kit that I've shown in this video, you know, I'm happy to go on more. I could talk for months about tools, I dare say. So if, you, if there's anything you'd like to know that I haven't said, far away, ask in the comments. I'll come back. I'll answer them. All right. See you next time. Bye.